Hey, I'm here with James. It's week two of my uh, handstand press-up yoga challenge. In week one, James focused a lot on hands and weight distribution, and this week we're gonna get into some core stuff and how to use that to get into a press-up handstand. And I'm gonna leave it to James, because he's an expert, and he's gonna walk through a little review. But check out our week one video before you try this one, and follow along. See if you can nail the press-up with me in six weeks. All, All right. right. Cool. All right. So. Once again, I'm James, and this is lovely Helen. Um, today, we're going to be focusing a lot on how the core translates into the curling up of the press-up handstand, because once you, uh, even if you're jumping into the handstand, there definitely is a lot of stability in the core that's required by the posture. So remembering last week, we focused a lot on the placement of the hands. Remember, if you're new to handstand, a little bit of extra width is helpful. Um, <clears throat> and also about balance distribution. Uh, so your hands can be directly under the shoulders or a little bit wider for a little bit of extra balance. Remember to press under your, press into your fingertips the entire time. Maybe There's, to the oh, yeah. There's also a weight distribution issue where as your hips come over your hands, it becomes easier to lift up your legs and then, oh, <laughs> and then to press your way up into a handstand. If you fall out and you bend your knees, you can come right out. It's not really that big of a problem. You can fall and you probably will fall probably at least a hundred times before it becomes easy or at least fairly possible to do. So let's begin with the boat pose. So just begin in a comfortable seat. Extend your legs long, lift up your legs either straight or bent and really feel the activity in your core, where we'll be curling up from. We're gonna hold this for about five or six long breaths. Keep your breaths long. The same pressure in your belly that makes your breath kind of become shallow will eventually become the same dynamic in handstand. So the ability to keep the breaths long in boat pose becomes the, the ability to keep the breaths long in the handstand as well. Cross your legs, roll over your ankles, take your feet back, we'll move through a vinyasa, so lower through chaturanga. Inhale through upward dog. Hold this posture for a couple of breaths to stretch out your abdomen and also to connect to your fingertips. Exhale into downward dog. Walk your feet up behind your hands and we're ready to give it a shot. Remember, if you fall out, just bend your knees. Not a problem at all. Hip forward, lift your legs, curl up with your belly, find your half handstand, and then extend your legs. Awesome, Helen. Beautiful. Woo. Come on back down. See if you can control your way down. All right, so second round of boat. This will be our favorite. We'll do five of these rounds and five attempts at handstand. And if you're not done, we can continue the process. It will be more of the same. <laughs> and then we'll continue with next week, week three. But for now, release your boat, cross your legs, take your way back through your vinyasa. Keep your belly engaged the whole way through upward dog. Hold for a breath. Exhale into downward dog. Really press through your shoulders. That inversion is kind of a beginner version of the handstand already. Then begin to walk your feet up towards your hands. Spread through your fingertips. Press into your fingertips like claws. And then balance forward until one or both legs lift up. Woo, all right. Yeah, once you have that balance of your hips over your shoulders, begin to extend your legs up to the sky. Nice. <laughs> nice. Squeezing the calves together to engage. All right, back down. <laughs> Boat pose. <laughs> Number three. This is about where the eagerness starts to fade. <laughs> is it okay that I'm hopping up when I'm getting into handstand? That is perfectly fine. Um, the, uh, the, the balance transition into the lift up in the handstand uh, comes after a lot of jumping as your hips begin to accommodate that extreme flexibility that's required in the shoulders and in the hips to move the hips so that they stack over the hands. All right, moving back to our vinyasa. Crisscross. An extra breath hold to stretch out your abdomen one more time. Exhale into downward dog. 
Make your way forward towards your hands. Take an extra breath if you need to. Remember, it is okay to fall. Like Even. <laughs> Ooh. Nice. <laughs> Let's take a seat. <laughs> Remember that the handstand is not something that you can succeed or fail at. There's a lot of falling in yoga, but there's not ever any failure. Okay. It's a building process, and one day when you have it, it will be built on top of the mountain of a lot of falling. So that's what we're doing five times today. If you do it five times at home and you achieve it on one, just keep going. It doesn't mean anything if you fall out the next time. Roll over your feet. Take your vinyasa. Exhale into your downward dog. Walk your feet forward towards your hands. Remember to give yourself a little bit of extra width if you need it, if it helps your balance at all. It can be very difficult on your wrists, so remember to press through your fingertips. Bend your knees. All right, nice. Curl into your belly and reach up through your feet. Squeeze in the middle of your calves, and that will help engage your belly through the muscles of your inner thigh. Nice. And control your way down. Beautiful. Last one. <laughs> Five, four. And one. Make the last one relaxing. If you can, remember to keep your breath deep. Perhaps let a smile cross your face. And to enjoy your practice, as fiery and difficult as the postures are, woo. <laughs> reach up, reach up through your toes. Yes, so you see how there's a, there's a balance over the hands. The hands and feet are in alignment. So the curvature of the body is stable through the points of the shoulders, hips, and feet over your hands. Beautiful. Take one last downward facing dog. Come through to a comfortable, any comfortable cross-legged seat. It's always wonderful after any practice of any length to sit for a few breaths and to really feel your breath and breathing, especially at the very, very tips of your nostrils. Once again, my name is James. This is the lovely Hannah, <laughs> Helen, sorry. <laughs> Helen, thank you for practicing with us. Namaste. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like my dad. <laughs> <laughs>